make sure it gets connected. We'll get started. I'll probably go over a few examples though first. Um, at least that's what I would like to do. Yep, it's all set up. But yeah. <clears throat> but I'll have both of these lined up so y'all can see. Uh, so I'll be trying to read both questions at once. So I'd appreciate if y'all use YouTube. It'd be a little bit easier. Um, now, <clears throat> a few things. I'm going to be going over the chart as well as book map. Um, another reason um, I think Bruce likes the style of trading that we do here. Um, because we're using multiple viewpoints, but I kind of want to start looking at some examples. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to go over, let me get this post on Twitter. So it's there should be, should be good. Did it not post here? One sec. Let me get this going on. I just want to get this on there. So it's good to go. I don't know why I messed up. Okay, there it is. All right, so we'll get going. So a few things, I can actually make my head a little bit smaller. You don't need to see too much of me. It's not that relevant. So I'll make it a little bit smaller, it should be better. Anyways, okay, so what I wanna do is go over really quick some stuff that we had yesterday. And Bruce, you have any interjections or questions? Um, and you want me to go over something a little bit more in depth? I would appreciate it, because sometimes I can skim over some things people may find important. So I'm gonna go over and bring this picture up really quick. And so this is a picture I took from yesterday. And so uh, I took this because it was really interesting in how we were moving. And I mentioned this in yesterday's YouTube video also. And when you're looking at structurally how we moved, and this is just ES, and primarily what my focus of using um, Bookmap when it comes to trading it is a lot to do with futures. Um, because when we, when we look, you can also see when you're looking at level two data, that a lot of traders, big money specifically, when they have a level up there, they take a lot of them off and on. And so it's a very big thing. And it's going to go into today when we look at you know the next image. But when we look at what happened yesterday, it was really interesting. So over the past few days, I've been tracking and basically weeks, if you followed me um, whatsoever, if we go back to like the, you know, we're looking here at the four hour and we look at how we've been tracking up, it's been highly aggressive from buyers, in my opinion, when we look at the market. Um, and so I'm always trying to stay with the overall trend. Um, and I'm trying to stay away from the market when we start to move, you know, like this side with that sideways action, right? So the sideways action is ultimately where you lose all your money. In my opinion, that's, that's the worst area to trade for day traders. Now you, you can use something like book map and it can help you, you know, get, you know, maybe in and out to find quick supports. Like I'm very bearish on the market, but we could see down here during today that there was a large, large, large buyer at 39.90, right? And, and it stayed there. So going back to something like last, you know, the past few weeks, you weren't having any aggressive sellers. You weren't really having any big walls. You weren't having um, bears trying to defend that upside move easiest way I can put it, right? And so you kind of just kept going. And any type of volatility that you had to the downside, it was quick, and then it would be met right back by buyers and push you back up. So it's, when I look at this image from yesterday, it really tells me that, this, that the, the script has kind of flipped, if you will, right? Um, and so when you look at what happened here, and you can see when I'm looking at this, I want to just show you. And I'm going to show you today's and I'm going to show you yesterday. So yesterday was a we can all agree it was a very downside day dominated by sellers. And we can see basically from 8.30 on, there were no even walls put up by sellers. Like sellers were so confident that they were just slapping the ask. So they were just buying at market, right? And so that's usually what you're seeing here. If they start setting some walls like right here, they're setting some limits. And so you're not seeing any limits really happening here. And it's all just aggressive selling going through every single buy wall, right? Just every single one. And you just go through and through and through and then eventually get a little bit of a bounce right there. But what this told me though, when I was talking on my live stream yesterday was, high possibility you might get like a little bit of a bounce maybe going into this 11 through 12 period which is like the lunchtime period which we're in right now and 
you might get a little bit of a bounce, you know, a little bit of a correction, right? And then most likely though, the strength stays to the downside because I just don't assume if you're getting this aggressive selling that it's just going to stop all of a sudden when you hit a certain level. And you know, if we go back to yesterday's, you know, range and we look what happened, I'm going to go really quick to like the 15 minute to give you a visual, right? So if we go to yesterday, we can see yesterday was Tuesday and go to around 11. I believe 11 is where we stopped if I'm correct. So about right here. So this is where that range was, right? So you come into this range right about, let me see so I can have it for you right here is where you have it. So this is at 11 through 12 o'clock time. And so we look, it's important to know that this is usually a time with the least amount of liquidity. You kind of just, you know, range trade and you can start to see the actually like you get a little bit of a bounce and you kind of hold through here. But I, again, still was very bearish on the market, post stuff on Twitter, post stuff you know, on YouTube, et cetera. And as you look, you continue down into the end of the day, ultimately, right? You, you keep breaking down aggressively through a lot of these major, major levels. That's on NQ. And you can also see it when you come into ES, right? So you can see that 11 time period right here again. And then after lunch, what happens? The aggression continues into the close of the day, essentially, right? And so that was yesterday, right? So very aggressive, giving you some live action things of what we're looking at there. Sorry, someone had their mic open. Make sure. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Um, I was just making sure I didn't know if anyone had a question. But um, so that was yesterday and what I was looking for there. Now, when we come into today, we saw, you know, a lot of the same, if you will, initially, right? So we see some initial buying at 830 and then followed by, again, aggressive downside selling. You see a few times they try to put a little bit of orders here. It's important as well that sometimes on bookmap, you can get the color grade that might show some strength or, you know, you might assume like sometimes when I look at the color grade. I'm like, okay, if it gets like pretty dark red, I'm assuming there's about 500, 400 to 500 at minimum lots there. Um, but it's important sometimes to really zoom in to see how much is there. And so as we look at this, I'm not going to say 270 lots isn't a lot between four, you know, 4,007 to 4,008, but it's definitely not as much as, you know, we have had like right down here, we go to red and we're at like 800 lots. That's a, it's a pretty nice order. You can zoom in and see the surrounding orders there as well. So it's important to really zoom in there and look. But you can see with all that aggression that started out in the day, very minimal until we get down to that big level, sellers trying to set any limits. They're just, again, very aggressive, pushing you down. And so that's what I was looking for today. But my, my partner actually, he noticed something pretty interesting is when you start to find the support, we start to see some interesting behavior right here. So we start to see sellers setting walls right? And they're trying to get in, but they just can't. They just keep aggressively pushing you down. They ultimately give you a double tap down there at 39.90. And then you start to see them take the order off the book here. So you had a pretty monster size wall. And this is kind of the trickiest part and probably the best part of book map is because you can identify when they just take orders off the book. And so what he posted was this picture, I believe, let me find it real quick right here. Uh, no, this was the one from yesterday. Really quick. Let me pull it up. I have it right here. One sec. Go to downloads. Um, Want to make sure I pull it up correctly. Yeah, it's right here. So you can actually see right here, and it's the same. It's the same. Uh, same chart. So you can see it's right there. It's just a little bit more zoomed in right now. Maybe that's a better picture. Um, but you can see right there, you get to this range and they take the book off. And so what he said is, be careful on any shorts right now because they just took that giant wall off obviously and they moved it and you can see there's very little liquidity up here trying to hold you down whatsoever in comparison to you know how it was you know prior to when you were trying to get that right there and then ultimately you get this bounce through this lunchtime period you're kind of slowly scaling up but ultimately you're not seeing any crazy strength you know overall from you know the indexes and you can see it happens again right here you have this wall here you kind of tap it they set more here but ultimately you can see as the color grading you know starts to fade off is that they kind of start pulling it away. Yeah, you buy some into here, but eventually once it's completely gone, that's ultimately when you have your best opportunity to break back through, at least getting that retest if they start to refill that, but which in this case, they don't. So that was a pretty big thing that I was looking for today. So I didn't really, and again, right now, I'm a very big trend trader. So I want to definitely side with the overall direction of the market. I'm not trying to, you know, trade the, you know, the 10 points of upside when there's 100 points of downside. You know what I mean? Um, I, it's all about understanding my risk to reward. And so I definitely think when you can see the 
the overall strength here that's kind of coming in. But it's also important to remember that today is a, you know, a Fed minutes day. We have a lot going on. So it's going to be a little bit more impacted than, let's say, yesterday. Yesterday, we didn't have too much happening. Today, you're going to have, you know, Fed minutes, which, again, I think is going to be a representation of what's already been said. Um, without the data pools that have been released on PPI and CPI, which is pretty skewed, if you will. Um, but yes, and then tomorrow, obviously, you have GDP and PCE. So we have some pretty big influential things coming up. But you can also see that you're getting a little bit of love coming back from this level, which you know comes back in tangent with some of the supply and demand levels also. Let me see really quick if there's any questions. Analyze gold. One sec. Um, very helpful, Stephen Joseph. Glad. Uh, any more questions? Sorry, I'm trying to see. I can pull up gold, Bruce. You're gonna have to tell me what the uh, what the setting is though on uh, Bookmap for gold. Like I like I said, my main focus when I'm using Bookmap is to get an overall viewpoint of what's happening with indexes because indexes point me in the direction of any and every stock that I'm looking at. Uh, that that's my ultimate goal here. It's to understand the trend of indexes, where they're finding support, where they're finding resistance, and then I move on structurally to you know. The stocks that I'm liking, right? So if I'm looking at something like, for instance, when I go over to, let me go to something that on indexes that I like to the downside, something like, you know, Tesla, and I'm looking here, I'm looking on a four hour time frame, and we're structurally, you know, we're breaking down, right? I want to not only see us breaking down on Tesla, and this matters here, but I need to understand the underlying value of indexes and what's happening there. So, you know, that's ultimately where it comes into me for me. Um, I'm going to assume it's on rhythmic. Is it not? A, what is it? A, I may not have access to the platform. Okay, it is on rhythmic. Um, would it be CBOT? Maybe. Okay. Still not coming up. I don't know why. Um, I may not have. I have access to it. Um, um, no, that's ES. Um, right here. Correct. Okay. 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 Yeah, even then, I may not have the permissions for it, Bruce, but I should since I've used I use Rhythmic every day, so it should have automatically given me all of it. Yep. Yeah, it's just not showing up for uh, permissions denied. So I may just not have access, which is strange because Rhythmic usually gives me access to everything. You look pretty great here for downside. You want, you want to try um, uh, DXV to pipe me in DXV? What's on uh, DXV, you said? So, so, uh, so go, go back up and, uh, yeah, uh, and then DXV, and then put in slash. Do I need to put in the excess or no? Um, yeah, I don't know why it's not allowing me. Say it again, GC. 
slash GC. I, I muted him. I muted him for my the stream. You might want to publicly mute him though. I can try just yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, that's strange. I yeah, I figured it was everything on there. Um, that's definitely strange. I just I've never have to pull them up. That's the only reason. Um, usually I don't get questions about it, but we can definitely get a setup for next time. I don't mind. I know a lot of these guys are commodities and futures and crypto specifically, so um, definitely we'll get that set up for the next one. Yeah, so I can't do any. Yeah, so I won't be able to do any commodities today, but for next Wednesday I will be able to. Um, but yes, so sorry about that. One sec. Gold analysis, just a five minute overview. Um, I won't be able to use gold on on um, book map today. So again, apologies. But yeah, if you have anything else on futures specifically or how I'm using it on futures, um, I would love to go over that as well. Uh, but yes, and I'm not also not using the other indicators. The only ones I do like right now for myself, a lot of them do work, but I'm just, like I said, my focus has been more of following the overall structure and the trend that we're getting and not the small short-term trades, um, just based on some of the stuff that we've been getting. That's been based on the action that we've been getting, especially with follow through. So when I'm looking at maybe like quick moves back to the upside, even like we can look at a stock like Nvidia or something like this on the lines, like Nvidia structurally, right? You know, I've, I've been playing a lot of the downside. Like I had a lot of puts on AMD. Um, that was structurally how I was moving and what I was focused on. And my biggest thing right now has been focusing on the stocks that have had some of the best moves to the upside. Like Tesla's up, I think, you know, beginning of the year to now, like 100 at highs, about 110%. So focusing on catching some of that downside back down, you know, semiconductor is probably the strongest, you know, in part of the market, I would have to say is definitely going to be the sector has got to be semiconductors. In my opinion, when we look at AMD and Nvidia monster names here, you can even see like here on Nvidia that structurally you have to really zoom in to see where these, these orders are even coming in. That's why I like, you know, these names is cause you're gonna get the most volatility out of these as well. You have any questions on anything that I've kind of gone over Bruce or no? I'm trying to make again sometimes i know i can rant and i can skip over things so i try to go back as much as possible for when people have that those questions you know, just, just great i mean like uh, uh you know just cover what exactly what you're doing like uh it's excellent like uh, what you're looking at how you use book map uh and uh and then others can now start to understand that too um, yeah And another thing, like in what you're looking at now, if you're trying to break local highs of 4020, I think 4019 is the key level on the charts. But if you look here as well, so when you start to see the strength, it's something that I'm watching for too. And so when you're trying to get the aggressive push up here, but look at how you're moving. So you start to see some of these orders are limiting in here. But as you start to push back to this level, so you test it once, push down, you're making a lower high here. You can just clearly see that. I don't even need to scroll back over to my, my chart whatsoever. But really look here. So one, they're creating a wall, which is a good sign. But you're seeing that they're overall, they're just being aggressive, slapping that ass ask. So when you're seeing that type of structure there, you're you're seeing more aggression. And ultimately that's what you want to see in either direction. It's the same thing like I was going over yesterday. And that's why I try to take these screenshots so I have them. Um, especially when Bruce says, Hey, we want you to come on in these specific days. And so when you have that type of movement of pushing down, you see how there's not that many limits and they're just really, and when you're looking at the bid and ask specific, specifically on level two, that's what I'm talking about now. And you can see that they just don't have that many and you're just really, they're just getting directly on the bid and you can see it coming directly in. And so ultimately that's what you really want to see when you're getting these breakthroughs and you can see once again, they're not doing it. So they're not waiting on either side of it. And when I'm talking about seeing the bulls or bears take control, I try to put it in layman's terms so people understand it maybe simpler or easier. But you can see what's happening there is that they're getting a little bit more aggressive there. And you also saw some of the ice icebergs is my my favorite indicator that uh, Bookmap has. If there was any indicator that I said that's almost like 
not necessary, but the best one for me is definitely the icebergs with the CVD gives you the best viewpoint of what's happening here. You can also see even on this dip, you saw those big orders coming back in right now. Obviously, some days you're going to get, you know, monster orders comparative. But you start to see the, these big orders coming also too. when when you start coming back down to the support level down here, which is pretty great. So what they actually waited to do was to one, get the bounce and then to actually wait to get some confirmation. And so you get a little bit of a low made here and then you start making higher lows ever since. And ultimately that's what we're looking for is we're looking for higher lows and higher highs to be made on whatever time frame you're looking at to structurally be any type of bullish or looking for type of rebound. But again, like, like I said, and see, you can actually see them pulling that book off the order. This is almost some of the same stuff that we've been seeing. And again, you can see very dark red, lots of lots sitting here and they're reducing a measure. You haven't even tested this level up here yet at 4019, right? You're still below it. So you can still see they're putting, pulling a little bit of those off of the book as you zoom in there. And really that's what I like to see is when they start to pull them off, that just tells you that you might be seeing some exhaustion maybe on sellers and that they're just not seeing the strength. And so today it kind of makes sense also too, if you line up like fundamentals with this as well. And that's why I said, um, when, if you are interested in looking at the YouTube channel every day that we're going over, it's, and see, you're getting that push through there. You want to when you look at fundamentals lining up with it, it makes sense. So you're going to get your fed minutes coming out and I believe, I think it's at 40 minutes at one o'clock central, pretty positive. So it makes sense that you're getting a bounce into fed minutes. And if we know anything about the last fed meeting, it was nothing short of great, right? Because we had Powell basically saying inflation is coming down. And I know everyone's going to, you know, be like, well, Tyler data's changed since then, but fed minutes is just a repetition of what happened from the last fed meeting. So it's important that you try to understand, you know, what's happening, you know, fundamentally what's coming out with data and then how the market most likely responds to that. And like, and when I was looking at the market, I was like, the only thing that can really bring you up right now is either something about the debt ceiling, which is not going to really be, I don't think that's going to be announced anytime soon. And then also to coming into uh, the fed minutes, which is going to be again, best way I can describe fed minutes. And I've had a lot of people ask the same questions on it. Um, when you look at <laughs> fed minutes, it's basically, like the person that sits in a courtroom and just documents everything said. So all you're going to get is a piece of paper that just tells you everything that was said. There's no one speaking. There's no fed members talking. It's just a repetition of what was already said. So you're probably not going to get any response about what's happening going forward with how the fed feels or anything from Powell along those lines. Uh, you'll probably just get what people voted for on the, uh, the fed rate hikes. But again, you're even still seeing that aggressive buying coming in here. So that's what I'm looking at now. So I think this is definitely something to be looking at from a fundamental viewpoint of potentially giving you some upside in the short term, which makes sense coming into this on the last hour of trading. So if we just look again, you get that major volume coming in basically into London's close around 10 a.m. Central. So that's London's close and they have the after hours into 1030, I believe. And then when you look at that, you bounce. That's where you end the day at. And then now you're getting a little bit of upside from day traders kicking into this Fed meet or Fed minutes. Really important to be viewing that as well. I'm trying to see. But yeah. I also want to make this clear too. I get a lot of questions about NQ and what I'm doing here. When I'm trading NQ, uh, I don't look a lot at, at the book, what's happening on Incube. It's just a little, it for me, it's not as clean. That's my personal opinion. Uh, again, I think everyone's different when they're, when they're looking at, when they're trying to interpret what they're looking at here. You can see some key levels that get established here. Uh, but ultimately for me, I believe, and I, uh, I think it's pretty clear here, if we just zoom out on the day right now on ES and compare NQ and ES, um, I think it's a lot more clear when we look at ES, right? So there's no huge levels here. ES, you can definitely see there's a lot more volume uh, at specific levels. And ultimately, uh, if you know any type, my trading is all based around volume, supply and demand, previous price action, and how we've reacted at those levels. And so you can see, again, you're still seeing the, all those aggressive orders. You're not seeing a lot of limits being put in. These are all just them aggressively buying in here. And that's what we, that's ultimately what you want to see. Wish I could pull up volume as well on here. Actually, yeah, you can, you can see it down here. You can see aggressive buying coming in there as well. See how it stagnates, it all stagnates down here. And then once they start getting aggressive, you start seeing those just literally, there's, those are not, those are just market orders coming in again and again and again. 
I would assume too you slow down once you get closer to twelve forty five to one o'clock as you get about fifteen minutes from those fed minutes. Unless you just totally break through any of these supply and demand levels. Things got cleared with ES. Nice. The dollar DXY. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get access to DXY either. I would assume DXY is going to be on. Is 100%. It would be on rhythmic. I might have to yeah, wait. Um, he said DXY one exclamation point. Would that be under, or is that not on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, would that be under DX feed or rhythmic? Okay. Let's see if it pops up. DXY did pop up. DXY in. Let's see if it gives us the data here. Yeah, I don't think it's going to give us. I do not think this is what we wanted here. Yeah. I also think it's important, too, that people um, don't hyper focus on the, the, the dollar right now. Um, you're seeing a lot of there's a lot of outside sources influencing the dollar, especially over the past two months since November. A lot of devaluing happening worldwide. So you can see them kind of slowing down a little bit here, but they're still, still showing good volume because they're putting more limits in. But you can also see, and this, this is why I don't like trading the upside right now. Um, past few weeks have loved it. Basically going into, I believe, February like 5th, 6th. I'm trying to think the week of whenever it was. First week of February was like basically, you know, market was only trending up. But you didn't have a lot of this um, resilience from sellers. So you saw a wall here and then you're building another wall, you know, $2 higher, right? So this is definitely going to be a thing of interest to see going into this Fed minutes, how we respond coming out of it. Things are cleared with GC correlation. But yeah. You can actually... One second, I'm gonna see where some of these stocks are at so you can see, maybe go over something. This will be an issue. So we'll go over, I wanna go over Apple. I don't really know if you guys here focus more on uh, equities or you know futures in general. Um, obviously, like I said, a lot of my focus is equities. Um, something to look at like on Apple. So Apple coming into today, um, basically the past few days, something that I've been watching for common pattern going in with a lot of equities that have you know been moving great is you basically since february 10th you were making higher lows just structurally moving up continuing apple you can see it going on there um go to go to microsoft happening there we can go to nvidia uh, very very similar right nvidia kind of broke that trend there but you can still see structurally still still moving fantastic since the end of january Right. So going to Tesla, this is ultimately why I'm looking at the downside here is as you break this structure, we're looking to see if sellers can start to step in and push you down. But going into Apple, you can see you, what I what I like to use bookmap for too is your response to levels I find on the chart. So if I'm looking at uh, Apple, for instance, right, and this was a heavily shorted stock and discord the past few days. And what we were looking at here uh, is ultimately you were really continuing on Apple, even despite SPY having some pain. So if we look at SPY from basically, you know, the 15th through 16th, right? Uh, we were looking at what was happening here. So on the 15th through 16th, you see the 16th, he started to drop. But Apple, which is, a, you know, one of the, probably the biggest holding in SPY, continued and kind of held near local highs, almost making a double top. So when you broke below this trend, I, I think it was really clear you were looking either for lows near 149, but ultimately 200 SMA was a huge level on the daily. And when I'm looking at any type of you know, you know, moving average, typically they're going to be daily or weeklies. So I want to see the reaction that we had here at 147. And this would have been a great instance because a lot of people would have said, well, I want to hold for the gap fill, right? That's what you, you see a lot of traders mention on social media, on Twitter, like 
I want the gap fill. That's what I want to happen. Well, spoiler alert, you didn't get that. If you had that, you'd be stuck. You'd probably be red on your trade now. So we go back to Apple and we can kind of see going back down to that level. We can get the exact number here too. Let's go back to the five minutes so we can see it real quick. Your low on the day is around 147.2 on the dot. As you come back in, you can actually see, let me, I need money to bring more up. Look at the level down there at 140. So look at how much, and that's been there all day. We can zoom out a little bit more. Let's go to uh, six hours back, see if it pulls all that up. Let that kind of resurge for us. But you're gonna notice that some of these big levels, they really stay there. And you can still see that, you know, there's still walls, you know, typically on some of the big equities, you're gonna see walls, and, you know, every dollar, every 50 cents, like Apple, it's almost every 50 cents that you see a wall and you can just take them out now and out. But when you look here at what was happening since the beginning of the day, very interesting that as you look here, you can see that was the level ultimately zoom in just a little bit more, you know, big level all day long. You know, they had a few off rip. You can see those kind of coming in. You had your 148, 148.4 again and again and again. But this monster level just kind of stayed here. And you're, but like I said, too, you're going to see them every dollar, every 50 cents. So you have to definitely watch to see how they respond. And you can actually see that you don't even make it down to that level. You'll make it right to 147.2, right at that 200 SMA almost. About You get a little bit below, about 7 to 10 cents below it. Not even able to test that level. And ultimately, you start to push right back up as well. So it's really interesting to see these is when we're looking at them. Because not only do I want to watch my key level that I have maybe on my chart, which again, the 200 SMA monster level, something we're always watching for. But I also want to come into book map to see if we're actually gonna flip this. Because something like AMD gives you a really good example also. So this is something that I was short on. I'm trying to give you a few different use cases. And so when I look at AMD, uh, what I was looking at here was going to something meta. I'll go over meta one second. So if I'm looking at AMD, you get below that 200 MA and ultimately it becomes a resistance the same day, right? So you, you break below, and then it becomes a resistance. And at that point, that's a shorting opportunity for myself. And I ended up going short and writing this down to 75, 76. And so when you come back in here, though, you want to start to see your reaction at these levels as well, because obviously you can see there was they started to establish a bigger, bigger position as the day progressed here. As you got closer and closer, you can see more and more orders came in. It got all the way close around looks around 10,000, almost 10,000 um, at the bid. And that's definitely going to show you interest. So if you start to break through this, then you can start to look at, okay, that support level we were looking at. We've already broken through some pretty big walls. Sellers are definitely proving their point here. Then you can start to look at that as a resistance as well, looking at a book map. And that's what you see a lot of people, if you see the, 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 the term trap, really overused a lot. So when you're looking at that, it's important to identify that you know, you need to watch the underlying at the level two of where you're getting this. And again, level two book map, you know, essentially the same, this is the same thing because it's going to give you the visualization. But you can see that even if you broke below that, you know, 200 SMA, you still had a monster level. And in comparison, right, does anything really, you can say, man, 146 is pretty big. But ultimately, this is going to be that level right now that's really going to be the game changer. Apple's usually not going to move down 3 to $4 in a day. It's a slower mover. So you definitely get a little bit more answers there also. Um, yeah, so you're seeing that sellers are stepping back in. What time is it right now? 1230. I thought they would slow down more closer to 1245, just coming into that Fed minutes. Uh, is that what we were seeing? But look to how, this, like I said, and this is again why I keep saying, like, I've not, the tr trading upside for me has not been the move over the past week, week and a half, right? Because if we're looking here, again, they're not even necessarily key levels. They're not even necessarily the biggest, like, you know, resistances that we would expect here. We can go over real quick to ES and give you a visual. Um, yeah, you can just, I mean, you can see right there, you can see, yeah, you have your local high about right there at 4024. I would consider this a, a clear demand that's trying to form, but I mean, you can't, I mean, it's not even on the one hour chart, so you really can't even validate it per se. It's still really trying to push it, but you can see this isn't, you know, the monster key level or anything like that, like 4,000, 4,009, right? So you're still seeing the aggression in my opinion, or yeah, the aggression is the best way to put it from the sellers trying to still establish walls after they get taken out almost instantly, right? And so buyers, again, resilient, trying to push you back up through it, but we're not seeing the same thing from buyers, right? That's that's a very important thing to realize 
when we come into this uh, price action that we're getting. So like, for instance, you come back down here, you have a little bit of a level of 4,005. 4, <laughs> they, they just take the, they just take it off the book. That, that's why the next time you come down to it, you sit there for a second and you just plow right through it to the next level of 3990. And so that's what you have to be constantly, constantly looking for. And it's like here, yeah, you come up, you buy a little bit through it, it's off the book, you break up, but they just keep making wall after wall after wall. And ultimately the, the goal is one, to reduce risk at all costs. I'm, you're gonna hear me repeat that over and over. But also, too, it's, you know, to take the path of least resistance, right? Uh, I'm not trying to sit in a trade and watch us, you know, battle back and forth, right? I'd rather have a trade that can see in a clear trend, um, you know, have a few, have some time on it with my options and ultimately be able to, you know, not have to com worry completely about the, the health of that, of that trade. Um, so someone asked about Meta. If you all have some stock show me to go over as well, I don't mind doing that while we're here. Meta, I need to bring it back a little bit further. Uh, thoughts on SPY daily calls and puts should be a move, but and be able to win. Poker life, I don't really know what that means per se, uh, but uh, giving you a visual too, something that I always tell um, people on the live stream. Um, so if we're looking at the put to call ratio, one, the put to call ratio is definitely in favor of the puts. When we look at SPY specifically, go to something like Q's visual there, same thing, heavy into puts there, SPX, a lot of puts, but you can see some, this is a better example, but I'll give you my, my two cents here. So if you're looking at futures, SPX is a better viewpoint of futures. Um, and when we look at what's happening here on flow, uh, it's important to, I, I honestly tell people, throw this number away. Your put to call ratio, I don't care about that. Um, because this doesn't tell you the actual number or the money value that you're looking at. Um, again, which is why, you know, book map gives you the best visual of, you know, actual, you know, who's showing signs of strength, who's showing signs of weakness. But if you go into something like SPY, I'm going to come back to SPX. At SPY, you can see all the value. Look at all your, your, your biggest orders of the day are to the downside, right? I don't even, I could, I could cover up the put to call ratio. I don't need to see that. This is just the number of overall orders. Um, so obviously the orders, when you're buying them deep in the money or you're buying, you know, some of these more conservative options, they cost more. Like this one costs $5, this one costs $75. So there's a very big difference in the price there. So overall premium, in my opinion, shows, you know, buyers or sellers being again, more aggressive, what's again, lines back up with what's happening here on book map. Um, meta, meta. So meta is a very interesting play and we have our key level at 172.5, but you can also see, you can see that's obviously where you've been hitting this 172.5 area to 172.7. You have a big wall at 173. Um, meta, I think people need to be careful with anything that social media, uh, everyone starts to having the the same trade idea I, I get concerned about so everyone's saying when we look at meta if you haven't seen meta in the past few weeks uh, meta obviously has a monster gap down here at 153 a lot of downside opportunity that 200 S sma down there as well i think it's very interesting i think it's something that you need to keep your eye on um but i'd be very careful that being said the key level that i've been watching is 172.5 and it goes pretty far back. So you have to go pretty far back on your chart to see. You go all the way back. I believe it's like your swing high. Yeah, it's your swing high about right here. And you had so much resistance at that point. So 172.6, 172.5. So as we come back in here as well, you can see once again what happens. So like I said, path of, <laughs> path of least resistance is, is always the one that I'm trying to take. So we can see on the downside push, look what happens. So you push from 173 down to 170. How many walls were established here, right? So we had a level, it wasn't even that big of a sell wall at 173 buyers just showed no strength and absolute just pure weakness. And you push down, right? No walls were established until 170, which is a just a round numbers, 170, 180, 190 are always gonna have, you know, a wall that somewhat gets established, right? And so when we look what happens back, look at again, buyers should have pushed you up, one wall, two, three. You sit here for basically from 10, 17, 10, 20, all the way until 11, 20, and then eventually you try to break up. And then once again, you have another, what is that? 80 cents of upside, <laughs> one wall, two, three. So again, just looking at this, I mean, what would you rather trade? And I think, you know, that's what you have to, 
you know, I, I love using Bookmap for some of the shorter term stuff, like what we were talking about ES a second ago, but it also gives you a visual on where this weakness is and where the strength is, right? So when I'm looking at this push up, I'm just like, you know, it takes us no time at all to get to, to, get to these lows. <laughs> and then on our way up, it takes us, you know, you know, what is that? Like, um, you know, 10 times as long to get back to, to where we were. And so when we look at this, it just tells me, and again, what do you see here when you get rejected? Where are the walls? Where, where, are the, where are the buyers showing up here? You see them kind of showing up here, but they don't even keep these on the book long enough for it to really matter. Whereas these other levels from sellers, you can continue to see that they want to hold you down. And so the, again, that paints the best picture of where strength is versus where weakness is. And so again, that's what I'm always trying to do is find where's the best opportunity so I don't have to, you know, stress out about a trade. Uh, I'm asking if it's a good idea to buy calls and puts on SPY daily. Should be a lot of volatility and be able to win no matter what. Um, I won't be doing that. Um, you know, do your own DD. <laughs> but I'm never going to tell someone to buy calls or puts. Uh, but yeah, um, again, I, I don't think Fed minutes are going to be the greatest uh, direction signal on the market personally but i could be wrong i could 100 be wrong c-e-l-h i don't know what i don't know we'll pull that up c-e-l-h celsius a lot of you guys love this one i always see people asking about it i will also say though poker life um if if you aren't familiar with strangling or straddling a position on options, I don't think using a, um, I don't think waiting to a volatile moment is the best time to do that. Um, personally, I always try to try new strategies or do anything different. That's kind of out of the norm for me. I always try to personally wait until, you know, the least risk is there that goes for both directions. Right. So I want to understand something before I start to, you know, put, <laughs> you know, some money that matters on it, right? Or even paper trade if you have to. There's a lot of free tools out there. Celsius, so you saw again, anytime you see from the beginning of the day, there'd be pretty big levels. And obviously something you should be watching. But again, here on Celsius, so you saw, man, it's like, it's like every two, three dollars. So you saw a really big level there, 85. You bounce right above it. You don't even really get to test it. And really, that's what you want to see, in my opinion. You you kind of don't want to see your level tested. You don't want to see, if you're bullish, for instance, on something, you don't want to see you even start to break through it. Because chances are, if you start to break through it, you're going to either probably get a drop or get a bounce, and they're going to retest it pretty quick. But if you don't test it, I've noticed that you generally get you know an, an, a reversal and like, what you're seeing here, right? And so you get that bounce in that level you have to push up. You can see there's not even that much liquidity to the upside. So again, here, if I'm looking at this one, it's something that I'm saying, okay, there's clear downside targets, but but again, I, I try to focus on the big cap names, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, um, Meta sometimes, Google, uh, Tesla, just because the levels are more defined and we get the volatility and volume ultimately that we need. I don't want to be stuck in a trade. I don't want to have to you know, you know, have to really battle to make the money on the trade. If it gets to the direction move I want, I want to be able to make my money get in, get out. So volume, volatil volatility is something that's very important to me. So generally with Tesla, you know, AMD, NVIDIA, Apple, you're going to get that movement, right? You're going to, and there's a lot of buyers coming in on those option contracts. So something you have to be aware of, you need to understand if, if there's, is there's actually a market too for those option orders, which I don't think people focus enough on, um, is understanding that, is there, you know, enough, is there a lot of buyers out there for the option that I'm owning as well? That's when you look at something like, you know, still big companies, Caterpillar, John Deere, uh, Boeing for, uh, to a certain extent. I'm trying to think of some other names along those lines. These are still big companies, but and Google, I think Google's a, a decent, decent one as well. Uh, but their spreads get a little bit bigger, right? And you have to be a little bit more selective with what you're buying. Google is, you don't have to be as selective with Google, but definitely with Boeing and a lot of Dow stocks, you need to understand what you're looking at and have a clear plan when you're looking at trading those options. Or you're going to get stuck in them even, and you might get down even if the, you know, the trade moves in the correct direction. But food for thought on that one. Good question though, Beast. I appreciate the question. Let's 
Trying to see if there's anything else. I want to watch ES as we go into this. Okay, so we're about 12.45, 15 minutes until Fed minutes. It's actually probably one of the better days to go live, Bruce. I'm not going to lie. This is, <laughs> you're going to get some interesting action. And, some yeah, so I'm going to say we should get some interesting action here in a few minutes. So we should see something. If you guys have any more questions, I really I don't mind asking anything <laughs> or answering anything. Um, but yeah. Also, too, if you all have any questions around specific um, indicators on Bookmap that y'all would like to see me use and go over uh, for the next live stream, um, I definitely open for that as well. Um, I like to definitely gear when I make you know do a lot of the free content and going over, you know, live streams and stuff, even if it's on my personal channel, um, around things that you guys have questions about. So definitely feel free to ask. Uh, only time I don't like questions is when you ask the same one 10 times. That's the only time that it's not, it's not fun to answer the questions. But besides that, I, I really would appreciate if you guys have specific things on some of these indicators. Um, I think Bruce loves this, the guy from spot gamma. I've seen that one a lot. I, haven't used it enough though. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that one then is no longer available. Didn't after Oh. I cut yeah, I've seen them here and there. I was like, man, I feel like I know them. I was like, oh, that's definitely from book map. <laughs> I remember <laughs> um do you ever use Tom B R T levels on ES? I have no idea what that is. Um I have no idea. That is, I think Tom B is one of the traders from Bookmap. I'm pretty positive. Yeah, he's streamed. Yeah, I just don't know what that indicator is. Uh, yeah, RT, I, I, I don't know. Is, yeah, RT levels, I have no idea. I tried adding the 200 SMA to my charts, but it doesn't fall off the same path as yours. Is that a brokerage issue or... Um, so, no, it should not be an issue. You can, I'm pretty sure you can... Can you add uh, moving averages on... You probably cannot add them on Bookmap. I don't think so. No, we, we, we never, um, it, like you wouldn't need to. It doesn't make. Um, but giving you all really quick. So it de I don't know. It depends what broker you're on. But if you're on something like, for instance, um, you know, trading view. I know a lot of people use it. Um, if you go into your moving average, you just click again, it's either moving average or simple moving average, moving average will do on trading view. Um, go to settings inputs and just make sure the time frame stays, stays on the one day. So you can go to whatever time frame and it'll stay as a constant. That's a rule of thumb for any indicator on any platform though. So you need to make sure you set it like that. But again, so this is, yeah, where I expected if you're going to slow down, let's go into 1245. And then the last five minutes before, you'll probably start to see a little bit of a head fake. Someone asked, did you send them a friend request? I would assume Bruce did not send anyone a friend request, but I don't want to speak for him. That might be a scam. Yeah, that is definitely the problem when you open your Discord up for free. It is definitely a problem. We try to keep ours hidden behind like a newsletter. So at least if you want to join the free tier, you got to just subscribe to the newsletter. Best of our ability. But still, even then, it's constantly bots and everything else. Um, gotcha, I'll try that. Yeah, no problem, Ethan. Trying to see if some last few questions in here as well. Um, is there anyone else here in um, uh, any of the traders here that's focused on stocks and options specifically? I would assume Tom Tom focuses on those. 
I've seen them on Twitter as well. Um, do you use anything to track net flow? Uh, I do not. Really, when I'm looking at volume, uh, Ben, um, it's uh, I focus I focus on NQ, ES, and SPY. Um, every day in the video, you're going to see me talk about SPY volume, though, nine times out of ten. Uh, but, yeah, I focus on those. And any broker will give you, it should have a decent tool for it. Only broker that I think doesn't have a good tool for it is like Weeble or Rick Robinhood. But um, any broker should have decent, a decent tool to show you live volume coming in, even on futures. And TOS has a good one. Um, I'm sure Bookmap has something also too. Uh, solely trade options at the money via TOS. Nice, nice. Yeah, so if you're scalping, I definitely think like a lot of people, you know, my my community is difficult to to kind of read sometimes. So I'm making <laughs> and, and making videos. It can be a little bit difficult to make sure that I'm covering all bases as far as short term, uh, you know, medium term, if you will, like the next two or three weeks, and then longer term, you know. And most people on my channel consider long term a month and a half, which is bizarre, uh, but. Uh, it can be difficult, but I I always tell people if you're looking at if you're if you're looking at scalping and that's your focus, I think you have to understand what's happening here on level two. It's uh, Jay always says it as well. He runs Discord with me and it's always on the lives with me. But if he if he doesn't have level two data, he's essentially blind um, <laughs> to what you're looking at. You can't really just look at. I, I don't want to just come into a chart, especially if I'm trading something like on a five minute. So. Uh, for instance, like Tesla yesterday, great opportunity when you started breaking down from those lows, you broke 198, went quickly down to, or today you went to 192, but yesterday you broke 204, you dropped down to 199, popped up, and then you came back. So, I mean, if I'm looking at just for a quick scalp of that break of low of the day at 203, and you drop down instantly, you know, I, I definitely have to see the walls. I have to see the buyers. I have to see strength. And I think when you're looking at level two, it can be a little bit more confusing when you're just seeing the numbers. Uh, but when you definitely, you know, come deeper into looking at the visuals, like I said, from that picture, like this picture right here, I think this was, this is like the, my favorite part of book map is being able to see when they just pull orders off the book, like this right here, it got bought a little bit, but they didn't make it all the way up to 398, 397. So that tells you they just pulled that order off the book, which gives you like a clear trajectory, a launch, launch pad, whatever you want to consider it right towards the upside. So that's something that I'm always, this is like bread and butter, my favorite thing about book map. Uh, I, I will sit here once, once I get into a trade, especially if it's a scalp, and I'll just stare at the, I'll stare at the, what's happening on the book. And then I'll obviously have the chart open as well. So I can get a better visual of where my key levels are. Are we making new lows? Um, but you always want to be looking out for that. And like I said though, but look, the same thing's happening. You see those walls set up, come in there. You have a small wall at 4025. But on the downside, uh, you, you don't see much. <laughs> you don't really see it, it's 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 dark down here, and you can also see they're putting pulling orders off of that thirty nine ninety as you get up here and as you get closer to Fed minutes. So definitely interesting what we're seeing here. And I always love to go back and look at things that I've previously said, so you can get the the clear cut answer there, right? Just look how that's happening. So just again, you know, you're gonna hear me repeat myself a lot but it's really to try to get the point across. Um, and, you know, as you can see here, not a lot of walls pushing up, constant. It's just constant. It's nonstop. They pulled that order off actually right there. You can see that now, but we'll see. So definitely interesting what you're seeing happening here now. So, yeah, the, it's definitely queued up for some, <laughs> for some fireworks uh, coming into the minutes. Trying to see any more questions. Uh, what option try do you use if you do any at all? Do you have a stock that you really want to get into, but the SHA is priced high? And options spreads are wide. Um, so good question, uh, Beast Mode. So like I said, I generally, right now especially, so what I like to do is I like to understand the overall structure of the market, right? So if structurally speaking, I was giving a, and I've, I think I've showed this chart like over the past month, maybe over a hundred times. Um, if you look at the upside move that we had, giving you a quick, let me show you real quick. Where's, I don't have my toolbar out, out right now. So if you can see, you've essentially been trading in this uptrend 
for since January 6th into February 10th is when he broke down below. You kind of found resistance at the bottom and pushed down. Okay. So what I like to do is trade the overall trend, right? That, that's, that's my focus is to have the trend established and ride that trend for as long as possible, right? <clears throat> During this time, like now, I am not focused on heavy spread type options. That's, that is not my focus. I don't want to trade something like I said, Caterpillar. Or I, I had some Boeing in the money positions or, but like Dow and, you know, to a certain extent, Costco, you know, these option chains are going to be a little bit dr more dry. You're not going to have as much volume, but when you come to something like Apple or Nvidia or, or AMD or, you know, Tesla, right? The, the, the spreads get pretty tight which is what you want to see. So you don't have to, you know, enter some crazy order, right? You don't want to get a bad feel depending on your broker. And so when I look at that, I definitely take that into account with what we're getting. So I understand that when we look at this market as well, we're not in a bull market. What's, you know, obviously we're not in a, in a bull, bull market. When we go back to, to this time, right? I mean, you could touch anything and make money on options, right? During from 2020 all the way through the, you know, the end of 2021, you know, it was an, option traders paradise, you get enough time on your option and you're basically invincible, right? So looking at the differences there. And so that's one thing I've definitely taken into account in the past few months is trading things that I don't have to worry about volume coming into those options, unless I'm fundamentally very strong. Uh, giving you anyone, please volume burner. I didn't see a question volume burner. Um, but when you look at something along the lines, I'm trying to think uh, fundamentally a good trade, possibly on something with the higher spreads is something like Lockheed Martin RTX while we have this flare of, you know, crazy threats coming out of Russia and China, right? So you might want to look at military companies. Those, those might have, those might have, you know, the, the option for, you know, making money with something with higher spreads or being lucrative in that sense, because you have the opportunity of going up, even if the market goes down, they're inherently very bullish. So those are things that I look at Oh, I'm looking at high spreads, but I'm always deterred from going into something with a nasty spread. If, if I can, if I can still see a path to making money on something that has a very tight spread, like Nvidia and the structure is fantastic. Like Nvidia, you came right back into 210 and the key levels 211, which you hit perfectly this morning. Don't even get me started. That's the, the missed trade of the day. Um, but but yeah, so NVIDIA, like you can see here, it's like you have that path of, like I said, it's the same thing. You're going to hear me repeat it. Resistance to the top, you have a kilo of 208 and 207, but they're not just making these up. They're just, right here, they're just making them every 40 cents, 50 cents. They're just stacking them up here. So you can definitely see, but that order recently came in right there at 208. But I hope that makes a little bit of clarity when I'm looking at options specifically. <clears throat> Uh, Roberto is a stop in icebergs info and add on for extra costs on bookmap. It is, it is uh, Bruce and then we'll have the exact numbers for you. Uh, have you ever used quant data? The platform I highly recommend that for options, net flow, heat map, gamma data, dark pool levels. I have not looked at quant data. Um, I, I've heard a lot of good things about them. Um, but yeah. Uh, Raz van. I can't, I can barely hear you. One sec. What was that? No question? Oh, not a question. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a book map book map stream. But yeah, you're just moving totally in the dark here into this. So this is what someone was asking about going strangles or straddles here. And it's just like, <laughs> you can do it, but you're playing a dangerous game, uh, especially if you don't understand, you know, how to profit off of both sides, you know, and, and structurally how you tend to move with some of these events. Like I said, uh, <laughs> goal is to reduce risk, not jump blindly into something that I've never done before. And that's not to, you know, run anyone down. It's just to highlight, uh, <laughs> specifically what we want when we're trading here. How often do you stream live? Um, on my channel, uh, every day, but on Bookmap, we're going to start doing it every Wednesday. Uh, I won't be able to do one Wednesday in March, but that's the only time. Uh, we'll have more information on that. There, Bruce just posted the uh, stops and icebergs. But you're kind of making a flag here too, so I'll be watching that. 
Aaron G. Is it common that price goes in the opposite direction of nearby liquidity? Um, what do you mean? Like when you react to it or do you mean whenever, what do you mean? <clears throat> uh, the best way I can give you a visual of this. And so like when you're looking at book map, this is actually probably going to be pretty helpful. Well, one sec. So here, I'll answer the question and there'll be the last question we answer, but <laughs> I want to see how you react here real quick. Um, that is a good question though. Yeah, here, you have no walls established. They're 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 not giving you anything here yet. Should see something here. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see if there's any news. Do you all have a news section in uh in the Discord, uh, Bruce, or no? I'm sorry, what? Do you all have like a news section in the Discord, or no? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I was just curious. I was just curious. Yeah. So again, this is <laughs> this is this is what I'm talking about uh, as far as. Uh, uh, trying to connect the dots with some fundamentals and why you need to be aware of this. So people continue to, to, to discuss Fed minutes as being, you know, big market mover. And I, I did say today, I didn't think it would be that impactful. I thought it would be, if anything, it would be a terrible way to get, get traction of direction. And so all Fed minutes, just so you guys know, a little bit off subject, but it's all based on the last Fed meeting. So this was their key bullet points. Almost all Fed officials back 25 BPS, which necessarily be kind of good for the market. A few officials are favored or could have a 50 BP, which we already knew. Inflation risk is key factor shaping the outlook. And then they said also to that, <laughs> you know, this is obviously from the last Fed meeting. I think the tone will change drastically. Participants agreed that the restrictive monetary policy would require it until the Fed were confident that inflation would up to 2%. They also agreed that the process would take some time. Um, and they were pretty confident in the last meeting. Uh, but obviously that tone will change based on the data that we've already gotten and will continue to get. So when I'm looking at this, it's just like, eh, like <laughs> I'm not going to take this data pool as to heart as some of the others, because we haven't seen the new tone given to us. Uh, but really quick, uh, we're kind of not getting that much movement. If anything, we're getting downside. I, I like to wait. You can see that volume coming in here too. Um, and for anyone that watches me already live every day or on the YouTube channel, I always talk about using TOS for volume, but if you really want to get a decent volume indicator to see increase and decrease on ES, um, Bookmap gives you, because obviously I'm using the one minute when I'm looking at volume for the most most of the time, uh, Bookmap is going to give you <laughs> probably even a better view of volume of getting those spikes on ES, uh, because it's going to go, it's going to give you far more data, uh, and it's going to give you almost to the second, which is kind of insane but gonna give you a really good visual there so you can definitely see from fed minutes obviously big spike in volume to the downside so far compared to the rest and you can see it's almost your highest volume kind of coming in but now it's being impacted by seller or buyers coming in so we'll see anyways let me answer this last question real quick um is it common for price that price goes in the opposite direction of nearby liquidity liquidity wouldn't att attract price um, so I think it's the opposite of what you're thinking. So when I'm giving you a visual first on, let me give you a visual first on a chart and then I'll give you a visual on book map because they'll, they'll line up pretty fantastic. So if I look at something like, let's do, let's look at Apple real quick. Okay. So, um, Apple, we just, we actually just talked about this, this is perfect. So if we look at Apple beginning of the day, what was happening here? Okay, so we have the 200 SMA and we have a gap fill down here. So in my opinion, I would assume that there would be some liquidity down here, right? Um, we can. This is where I expect buyers to show up. And a best visual to give this, if you're looking at book map, whatever chart you're looking at, I don't care. Um, ultimately, when you, when you have a chart in front of you, what are you looking at? You're looking to, when you have a target to the upside, so if my target is locally, let's say, hypothetically, it's to 150.23, I'm expect that's that's where I want to start closing my position. Why do I want to start closing my position at a target? 
because ultimately I expect sellers to step in there. I expect sellers to be at that level. Now, if you're not looking at level two data, then you don't really know if sellers are going to be there. Um, you have to really rely on supply and demand and other factors there. Um, but that's what you're looking at essentially. So when I'm coming to this point, I am assuming that sellers are going to step in here to try to push me down. So what's sitting here? Liquidity. Now, when we come back down to our, our downside target from this morning, it was around, you know, 147.3, 147.2, right? The 200 SMA. Now, what am I expecting as we push down? I'm expecting buyers to show up at this level down at 147, okay? That's my focus here. So what do I think is gonna happen when we hit this? I'm probably gonna try to close my shorts as we get close to my target because it's my target and I expect buyers to want price to come to this point. And when I expect buyers to come to this point, I expect us to get a bounce. Why? Because buyers are stepping back into the market. That's where buyers have been previously. That's where buyers continue to show up is near this level. So when I go back to book map, giving you a better visual here, going back to something like where's Apple at real quick. Um, like we covered this morning. So we can see out of the gate, we have some, some of these levels forming up and these have all been here. They were, you can see they, they backtrack since market open, right? So we can see we're breaking down to these liquidity levels. So you're actually, it's more along the lines that you are getting drawn to those liquidity levels. Okay. But then we also have the major level, the 200 SMA down here. Now combined with looking at the ES and how much weakness was shown there, like I said in the beginning, that I'm automatically looking for downside on the market. And if I expect ES and SPY to go down, and the biggest name in the biggest holding in spy is what it's Apple. We, we know that, right? So you automatically are pushing on getting drawn to each of these liquidity levels until ultimately you hit the big one, which is around 147, which also we know what's above 147, that 200 SMA, which is my target. So when you come down to these levels, you, you want to see the reaction of what you get here. So like, for instance, when you come and break, actually, they just pull this off the book. They don't even keep it there. So you see a few buyers still there, but they pull a bulk of that order off the book. But what happens every time you hit these levels? You come to it, buyer step in, you bounce. You come back down, you bounce a little bit. Even if it's for a few minutes, a few seconds, you come back down, you bounce. What happens again? You come down to that level, you bounce, right? Why are you bouncing? Because that's where buyers are showing up. And it's just giving you a better visualization of what's actually happening in the market. It's showing you that you 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 have targets because you expect buyers to step in there and it's making logical sense. And so when you come back down here, like I said, is you're not going to, you don't have the liquidity necessarily at that level of 47.2, 147.2, but you can see that that level is right below it. And so that would be your confirmation of the flip to maybe get continuation down. And you can see that buyers just showed up here more aggressively and it happened with ES as well. So you saw a double bottom there and you kind of made a little bit of a lower low, but then you started trending back up. But in my opinion, it's still crazy because you, you can still see that so many sellers are are still trying to to push this thing back down. But that was a good question. Hopefully that made, if that didn't make any sense, please, um, I would love to answer your question. But also too, you can see from that bounce on there and, and the morning, all that liquidity and the liquidity stacked up even higher at 150. So, right, you've been drawn back to it. That's basically the best, vid this is like the, a great visual of supply and demand, but I don't have a demand or supply level here. I don't have them drawn out, but giving you a visual, this is what usually happens. You, you bounce in your demand and you, get rejected near supply. And as you come into supply, what happens? You hit right below it, rejected right out of it, right? So that's ultimately what you're looking for there. I'll answer like a few more questions if you'll have it, but that's almost gonna wrap us up. I wanna see if there's a few more though. Let me pull up YouTube as well. Um, I'm slightly confused by book map. What are the circles and reddish heated areas on them? So this is just marking liquidity. So you can see this is at 150, you have basically, there's a, you know, a sell order at 93, bounce between 93, 92,000 shares right there. And then if you go on ES, obviously in, in Q, it's going to be lots. Um, and then the bubbles represent orders and what's happening at those levels. So if I come to this order, it'll actually show me how many were bought there at the ask. 675 shares were bought at, you know, 149.27 right there at that level at the exact time. All bookmap is is level two data visually given to you. So you can see it better. So normally you have to go through and scroll through all these numbers here and look at the just the just the data. So you'd almost have to cover up all of this visual of what you're seeing on whatever broker you're using, and you don't get all this. But on Bookmap, you're going to see live where they're moving it. You know, are they taking it off the book? Are they putting more uh, things? A lot. So liquidity acts as magnets, but bounces between liquidity levels based on sentiment. I mean, price travels from liquidity to another up and down based on conviction. Um, I believe I'm answered. I we're on the same page. So yes, yes. 
That's why I always say too, when, uh, when it comes down to my trading, it, it's heavily based on reactions. So like when we look at something like Apple, if there was any, and again, like I said, I'm just trying to trade the downside based on how we've been structurally moving. Apple, you come down, you make a lower low here, you get a bounce, but you continue to make higher lows here, continually up. So you get a little bit of a flag and you push up here again. And that's what you want to see. That's just overall, you know, a nice, strong structure trying to form here. And you're coming back into that level again right there. Still on book map that there's not really anything here on the ES, which is kind of crazy. Very small orders. Um, yeah, Ethan, for sure. A little bit of a level there. Anything from you, Bruce? Not great stuff either. Um, I mean, uh, this is the uh, you know, this is what we love about the uh, you, you know, uh, talking with tra other traders in the different ways they use it. Uh, and uh, very, very simple and straightforward and the insight you're gaining. Yeah, for sure. And also, too, I want to tell you guys. So I just noticed. Let me go over real quick to book map. So in book map, uh, I believe y'all just gave me a section. So I'm going to try as well. Um, I, Twitter's always the best way to see any of the charts as they come in. Uh, but I'm going to try in my section to keep some of the supply and demand levels. And anything that I see on book map, I'll try to post it here. Um, is, it, is it possible for anyone to respond in these sections or is it just for me or ask questions? Bruce. That's fine. It's fine. Okay. I, I just want to have it there so I can just get questions. I think that'll be the best way uh, coming into these is so I can see if anyone has questions specifically or like, Hey, can you talk about what happened on Apple and something that we're seeing on the day? I think it'll be probably just the best way to do it. Um, so I can kind of have a few questions coming into it. Also, too, so I can know some of the things to look for. It's because, again, like all day I have like book map and all these things open, but like, very rarely do I see something like, oh, let me take a screenshot of that so I can explain it to anyone. That's why I saw yesterday's and took the screenshot uh, was so, <laughs> so it was available for today's. But yeah, you're seeing that sell. You're just getting just pushed right back down. But you had the higher lows you were making and then boom, broke, broke down a little bit there. So that's what we're looking for there. Um, one sec. I think that was it. I don't know what that message just was. Uh, Yeah, for sure. And so just let everyone know here. So I'll have stuff. I'll try to post every day in there for everyone. So specifically, I'll have questions. Um, but yeah, and especially too. So every day I'm going to have, I have book map in the videos. Only day that I probably won't have book map in my daily videos is Sunday, just because I can't cover data over the weekend on futures. Just not going to work. Um, but, and I usually make my videos in the beginning of the, like around noon on Sunday. Um, so if you'll have questions from, you know, the day's video or anything like that going on to book map or things that maybe I didn't mention or missed, uh, please feel free to ask in there. Um, I definitely want to make it so, you know, you guys have a say in some of the stuff that I'm going over here, right? I don't want to just talk aimlessly about myself and how great my trading strategy is, right? I want to be able to help you guys and give you guys answers to questions that you'll have. Uh, but ultimately I can't answer questions if you guys don't ask the questions. So, um, yeah, just want to, Throw that out there. So if you guys do have questions, stuff, make sure I'll post them in there. Um, I will try to have as much stuff posted in there also too. Even not just book map, but also to what's happening with supply and demand levels, areas to be looking out for. Because as much as I, you know, you know, love book map here, I also have to use the chart and identify where to expect these levels to come in. Right. So you know, right here, four four thousand five. Hasn't been the biggest level, but I come into 4,009, it's been a monster level, right? So it's still important to realize that as you push below 4,005, highly likely that the wall starts to get established around 4,009, 4,010. And then we start to push back below 4,000. So anyways, that's about it for me, guys. Um, that's going to wrap it up for me. Um, I don't know if Bruce has anything else.